Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, so today uh, I will be discussing with you a, a new topic, which is the difference between uh, distance and displacement. And I will try to cover a few examples that shows you the difference between distance and displacement. So let's start with the first example. It says that uh, Ahmed bicycles from his home to the school uh, 3.0 kilometers east and then 2.0 kilometers north. Uh, Mahmoud's home is located 1.5 kilometers west of Ahmed's home. If Mahmoud was able to meet Ahmed at the school by bicycling in a straight line, what is the length and the direction he must travel? So here we have two people. I have Ahmed, which I use sample A to represent him, and Mahmoud, which I use the sample M to represent him. Now, uh, both of them are heading to school. So the school is somewhere here. But what Ahmed did is he moved three kilometers east, then two kilometers north, uh, while Mahmoud moved, moved in a straight line like this. So what we need to know is what is the distance that Mahmoud covered um, to reach the school this way. So basically what I need to find is what, I, what is this distance x. Now, first thing, let's look at Ahmed. He moved three kilometers east, then uh, two kilometers north. But if I look at the problem, I will notice that Mahmoud's house is 1.5 kilometers west of Ahmed's home. So here is Ahmed's home and I need to move west. Now, remember, uh, this direction is east, but that direction is west. So now I have to move 1.5 kilometers west. So that's Mahmoud's home. So basically now I need to know this distance. So this is 1.5 kilometers. This is three kilometers. So the total would be 1.5 plus three. That would be 4.5 kilometers. And this is two kilometers. If you guys remember, if we have a right angle triangle, uh, then I can say that the hypotenuse, which is this one, if I call it x squared, it should equal to this distance squared plus that distance squared. So now I will be applying this uh, Pythagorean theorem here. It should say the square root of 4.5 squared plus 2 squared. So if I use my calculator, I will get 4.92 kilometers. But remember, you also want to know not only the length, but also the direction. So here I have east, here I have north. So the final location is at northeast. Okay, now let's look at the other problem. And it says that a car moves with a constant velocity along a straight line. Its position is x1 equals to zero and time t1 equals to zero. And x2, 30 meters and t2 is three uh, seconds. What is the car's position at time t equals to 1.5 seconds? Okay, look at this, this is pretty easy. Now I have three positions here. Now the first position, x1 equals to zero when the time t1 equals to zero. And the second position is x2 equals to 30 meters and the time is 3.0 seconds. Now we have a location uh, which is somewhere here in between, in between at 1.5 seconds. So pretty easy. So this is t time equal to zero seconds. This is a 3.0 seconds and this is in the middle. So now you want to know what is the location? What is the position at the middle? So what you have to do is to say zero plus 30 meters divided by two to find the middle uh, location, which would be 30 divided by two, that would equal to 15 a meter. Very straightforward, very easy. Okay, now let's move on to the problem number three. And it says the car travels 22.0 meters per second north for 30 minutes and then reverses direction and travels 
28.0 meters per second for 15 minutes. What is the car's total displacement? Okay, so this is very similar to the problem number one and problem number two. However, here we just need to calculate how much distance the car covered at each one of these two intervals. So I have velocity and I have time. But the first thing you will notice that the velocity is in meters per second, but the time is in minutes. So now I have to convert minutes into seconds. Now, as I have mentioned in lecture number one, that one minute equals to 60 seconds. So to convert from minutes to seconds, I need to multiply by 60. So here at the 30 minutes, I will convert into seconds by multiplying by 60. I will do the same thing with the interval number two. I have 15 minutes, I wanna convert them into seconds. So again, you need to multiply by 60 to convert the time into seconds. Okay, but this will not give me the distance. I want to find the distance. Now remember that velocity equals to distance divided by the time. So the distance equals to the velocity multiplied by the time. So for the first interval, if I want to calculate the distance that was covered, the displacement that was covered, um, because here we care about direction, it will equal to 22.0 meters per second multiplied by the time, uh, which should be, of course, in seconds, that will give me a 39,600 meters. Now I will do exactly the same thing with the second interval. So in that case, the D2 equals to 28.0 meters per second multiplied by 15 minutes multiplied by 60, that would give me 25,200 meters. But you have to remember something very important, that at the first interval, the car traveled north, and at the second interval, it traveled south. So north, up, south, down. So if I want to find the total displacement, I must subtract D1 from D2. That gives me a 14,400 meters. Now you want to convert this into kilometers. And if you remember, to go from kilometers to meters, you must multiply by 1,000. But if you want to convert from meters to kilometers, then please divide by 1,000, that gives you 14.4 uh, kilometers. Now, uh, is that north or south? Of course, this must be a uh, north, so the 14.4 kilometers north, because this distance north is bigger than that distance south, so the answer should be 14.4 kilometers um, north. Okay, so now let's see more problems. Uh, and uh, it says that a person, it says that a person, um, it says that a person starts at a, a position uh, 23 meters east along a coordinates uh, axis, x equal to 23 meters. He then undergoes a displacement of 45 meters west. What is his final position? So look at this. This is the starting point, and what we are saying is this person started from here, and he moved 23 meters east. Now remember, this is east. Then he decided to go back 45 meters west. So starting from east, then going back to west. We need to know what is his final position. So this is very obvious. So 23 is 45 meters uh, west. So I must say 23 minus 45, that will be minus 22 meters. So his final position is minus 22 meters. Now, what does that mean? It means that he is now located at 22 meters west of the starting point. So here, this negative sign in, in physics means what? Means that uh, his final location is at uh, 22 meters. So, so I guess we, we should, we sh so I guess I should, um, 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 
uh, correct this. So this is not east. This must be uh, west. So his final position is 22 meters west and not east. So please be careful. There is a mistake here. Uh, it should be west and not east. Now let's now look at the last problem. And it says that a, a cyclist moves to five kilometers east and um, three kilometers south, then five kilometers west, what is the displacement of the uh, cyclist? So it looks like the cyclist is moving in a rectangle, uh, a rectangle, uh, ro rectangle road. So this is a starting point and this is the uh, finish, finishing point. So he moved five kilometers uh, east, then three kilometers south, then five kilometers west. So this is his finishing point. So what is his displacement? So remember, to find the displacement, I must locate the last point with respect to the starting point. So obviously, it is three kilometers and is it north or south to the starting point? So it is below the starting point, so it must be a south. So remember, everything down means that you are moving south. Remember, the displacement is always the final location with respect to the initial or the starting location. Now the last problem here is number six, and it's about moving in a circle. It says that an object moves from a point A to the point B to the point C to the point D, and finally to the point A. So you see, this object moves from A to B to C to D, then finally to A. Now let's say that this is a satellite uh, moves around the Earth, or the moon moves around the Earth, and so on. So we have a kind of this um, a circle or elliptical motion, and, but of course, in this case, we're talking about a circle that has a radius of uh, three meters. And now what we need to find is what is the distance covered? Now, we have to remember that if you have a circle, then the distance that is covered in a circle is called the circumference of a circle. And this is equal to two pi multiplied by r. Of course, you guys should know this. Two pi r is the circumference of a circle. And the circumference is the distance covered in the circle. So it's a two multiplied by pi, which is 3.14, multiplied by r, which is 3 meters. Now, r here is the radius of the circle. So if I use my calculator, I will find out that the distance covered is 18.84 meters. But what is the displacement uh, that is being covered? What is the magnitude and direction of the displacement? Now, as you may notice that the object moves from the point A to B to C to D back to A. It's like, like it's not displaced at all here. So the total displacement is zero because the starting point is exactly the same as the end point. So the, the displacement here in this case equal to zero. So please be careful that the circumference of a circle will equal to two by r, but the area of the circle, the total area of the circle is different, is equal to uh, pi r squared. So if you want to find the distance that a person covers in a circle, then you must use two pi r, where r is the radius of this circle. So I hope these problems help you to understand the difference between distance and uh, this placement and thank you so much i will see you in the next video um, bye for now